Healing crystals, skincare routines, knitting a sweater, fitting in jeans. With Katie and Sarah, no need to worry, you're on a lady journey. Hi, everybody. Hey. Welcome to Lady Journey. Hi. Oh, we're so cozy. And we Guys, both have new sweaters. It's cold out there. It's absolutely freezing. I just looked at my phone and it said 28 degrees. For daytime, that's actually pretty cold. Pretty cold, yeah, and it's yeah. gonna be dropping way down. But I'm, I have my, um, my long johns on. Ooh, smart. I haven't gone there yet, um, only because when I put them on, it makes me feel like I ate a huge meal. <laughs> <laughs> you have compression <laughs> long johns. I'm just like, I'm so full. Well, long johns are one of the big pluses of the jean shift. Yes. Because with skinny jeans, I would always be like, how am I supposed to wear long johns under these? My my jeans are <laughs> like glued to my skin, basically. <laughs> You're like, these are my long johns. <laughs> You're like, I'm wearing double skinny jeans right yeah. now. But um, I have I have a big, big old pair of barrel jeans on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they she are can... the widest of the wide leg. So this is the time to wear long johns. Long johns are, I call those they're game changers. Oh, that's it's a game changer. I call them long janes <laughs> for um, <laughs> feminism. <laughs> oh, my long janes. You actually are a true feminist. Yeah, I just change words. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's easier than doing an eight-hour walk. Yeah, it's easier than donating. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I'm so excited for today's episode of Lady Journey because you and I, first of all, thanks to everyone who's listened and thank you for writing reviews. Thanks for chiming and, in. And please write more. And al always share what's going, some of your journeys, because I, some people I know we've gotten recipes and we do appreciate that and we will test them out. And I love the person that shared, um, and this could be an idea, but somebody shared their panty drawer. Did they really? Yes, they shared through the IG account. They said, um, you know, it's a great idea. I think they did like a before and after. They organized their panties. Okay. And I was like, I love this. However, I'm not willing to um, reveal this about myself because I actually do not have – I have the um, hanging drawers. And so it's like I'm just kind of th – throwing stuff in a shelf basically yeah. <laughs> so my panties are i crumple them and i push i crumple and push <laughs> throw them in there and i i set yeah. it and i forget it yeah marie kondo would be upset yes. <laughs> let's let's say that it's so. hard though i've tried the marie kondo of f of folding the, the vertical folding the vertical folding Can yeah I it's just tell you it, it doesn't work as it's well. tricky. It's it, tricky. It's tricky. I don't think it saves that much space, and you're doing a lot more time uh, folding clothes now. Yeah, and I get my laundry done now, which it, I used to do it for years, and now I just kind of have to because it's actually literally the same price to do it in my yes. neighborhood. And they already fold everything, so it's like I can't pay to get it folded and then – fold it again in a different way yeah because like, they fold it that's the definition of madness <laughs> <laughs> i know because sometimes when you do get it you're like i'm gonna have to refold this the marie condo the marie way, Kondo way yeah. because if they did it the one way but now they at the laundromat they fold they make a little fold with my t-shirt and then they do it again that mm -hmm. you're like well this is not i can't do the Marie Kondo method without having to completely undo yeah. what you just did. Yeah. And yeah. they do the thing where they fold my t-shirt where the logo is inside. So I don't know <laughs> what shirt it is. And I'm like, why would you do this? But I appreciate what they do. They fold it better than anything I could have ever folded. So I, I don't complain about it. I'd like to get into, uh, you know, this is a thought that I'm having now in real time. But like if I rolled my panties, you know, if I just rolled it up like a little cigar and just kind of put them in, you know, <laughs> you know, and then just had it because I have, you know, I have a range of panties. I have, you know, my bags. Yeah. And those are my everyday wear. My grannies. Yeah. And I love it. I love I, those. Oh, I love grannies. I have my bags and then I have some panties that I got from Amazon that are very tight. And I've bought panties on Amazon. The first the first round I had to cut them. I try to cut them, which that it's like now my. I just have a big rip in my in the side of my panties. <laughs> like, You're like, just get new ones. It's like, am I living in the depression <laughs> that I'm just like making do with my Amazon underwear? So, and then I got some more, like an idiot. And they were still, I thought I was getting like, I love like the cotton. These are tight. So I need to know, I, I, I don't know if I just, I can't just like pull out a pair of panties, roll it back up, put it in, you know, and then mm -hmm. it might be, it might be too convoluted well, for my lifestyle. I will talk about this on the next episode of 
where my journey is the tightening of the bolts because yes. this is a thing that I'm stay tuned going through I love k- leaving a cliffhanger Ugh. in an episode and what podcast wha- does that oh my god what will happen yeah what oh, I, I gotta know closet. what the next one is I opened my closet and something terrifying was in there <laughs> But what were we getting into? Because we were getting in. Oh, uh, we were, we were sharing. Into, we, people were sharing their stuff. And yes. Then, and but thank we, you. Yes. And so um, I was so um, excited because you and I actually for Christmas got the exact same immersion. Blender. Unsparked. It wasn't I like totally, we were both like. We weren't planning it. It just I didn't happened. even know that you were in the market to get one. It's been on my mind for a while, and I didn't think that I needed it too much. But then I looked at the pricing of it, and I was like, why not? And you got the kitchen maid. I decided to get the kitchen maid because they come, and we don't even, we haven't told them what it, we're getting. Yeah. It's the emulsion well, blender. You're saying emulsion, and I'm saying immersion. And what is the, what is the right way? I I've never, don't know. Mike I, was I'm going to say I'm the wrong way because I'm always like, the wrong way. Well, Im- but but it, I think I think there's two ways. Because like emulsion, isn't it when you mix like kind of like, o- like when you salad make an dressing? Emulsion. Yeah, yeah. Because you're mixing it and and it can drop out if you un- if it stagnates. Yeah, oil. Yeah, you have to. And I'm saying immersion because I'm dipping it in stuff. Which is uh, they're so both I true that, statements. I think that they. I think that it is called both of these things. I but it's a blender that you put in. Yeah, you drop it in. Like, I, I also was calling it a hand mixer. Which I think it's also called that. But I think a hand mixer is actually when you the do, two, like, the egg beaters. Yeah. Which you have, and I'm jealous yeah. of, and I also want that. But that that was a dollar store buy. Oh, really? Yeah, because Ugh. I just needed it right away because it's not often that you need a hand mixer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it does get the job done done but i would have to say it's probably not the best one i've always wanted the kitchen made one yeah i want the i want the stand mixer yes but Give me who, a stand. who has the counter space for that right what am i, what am I the fucking in a nancy Mayer's <laughs> wife <laughs> are, are we in a nancy myers like what i don't have an island in my kitchen um those things take up so much space but they actually sound amazing but the hand blender. The blender, the hand blender, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It is a stick, okay, people? It's a stick, stick with, with a, a blade. blender on the end. It's a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I've been bringing love, it out in my purse. <laughs> I love a feminine <laughs> weapon. This is the most, like, actually, if there was a female serial killer, if there was a movie, like, um, just immerses <laughs> blenders on you. <laughs> uh, just whips you up. Yeah. So I'm so excited to get this because I um, I have been forever, like, making soups and stuff, and I scoop it into my bullet, my magic bullet, and I blend it's, it in that, and it's a nightmare, and it it's doesn't go well. You can't put in the whole s- hot soup in there. I put hot soup in it, and it's... It's it, gassy. Yes, and you and open it, and it just, like, explodes out because, <laughs> it's like, it's building up, and you're like, what's happening? Your kitchen has splatters everywhere. Yes. You've got burn marks all <laughs> over you. Yeah, meanwhile, the plastic's, like, melted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a mess. Where that is the number one reason why I want it because you in the cold months, I like to do soups. Love to do a soup. Which sometimes some soups, especially with root vegetables, I'm like, is this baby food? <laughs> This is baby food that I just made for myself. Yes, pumpkin pumpkin yeah. soup. You're like, wow. This Carrot is, ginger. It goes right down. Butternut squash. I hate to chew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I want it hot and I want to dip bread in there with oh, butter. Yes. But you, all you have to do is you just put it in there mm-hmm. and you blend and it works. Turn it on, baby. Yes. Yeah. It's great. So what have you been making with it so far? So I did a tomato soup. Oh, yum. Um, I don't think I got that one the way that I wanted because I thought some of them say that you can use roasted red pepper in there. And I did. And I thought that it made it tasted weird. But I mm-hmm. actually discovered if you think your soup is weird, just put a whole stick of butter in it. <laughs> butter soup. <laughs> I love a butter like, soup. It feels like a hobbit <laughs> recipe. <laughs> oh, butter soup. Ooh, but <laughs> it's straight butter. That's like something like my peasant mom would just stick a butter in. Yes. It, like, yes. and then we would eat it as soup. Just filling. Yeah. <laughs> um, that I've also did the green goddess salad. Oh, you were saying that. Yeah. And you made the dressing. I made the dressing. Which is, that's an emulsion. Yes. You did the emulsioning. And um, that's the other useful thing, this, um, whatever we want to call it, the immersion. Because I love this one because it comes with that little cup. Yeah. And then you're just like, oh, this is perfect for doing your little salad dressing in there. It's 
perfect for that because I actually think salad dressings taste way better made from scratch than store bought. I think store yeah. bought puts too much sugar for oh yeah preserving and they put weird stuff in there but of course we're both on the baked by melissa salad trend uh which has been sweeping the nation she was on um a good morning america i know can i just say this salad i was intrigued i was like the way people have talked about it you would think it's like french fries yeah. <laughs> you would think you would think that it is the best meal in the entire world and it's like okay it's a salad yeah the micro chopping i get it it's very flavorful it is it also takes me four <sighs> hours it takes four <laughs> hours also they're like use a head of um what it, cabbage yeah guys i did half a cabbage and the mound of salad i had yeah. made for myself was so it was too much do not use you not even half a cabbage. No, and you're getting a head of cabbage, and you're like, is this 20 pounds? <laughs> it is so huge. It's like the densest food you could possibly get. It's insane. It's, it's insane. insane. The They left that detail out. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you right now, do not – I would say maybe – a quarter of a cabbage head. Yeah, yeah. And then figure out whatever you can do with the rest of the cabbage. Do your best. I mean, do your best <laughs> with the salad. Did you, did you find that um, the dressing like softened the cabbage? It did. It lasted a few days. I think the selling point of the salad is you eat it with corn chips. That was the other thing. I had to bag Chip like salad. I had to buy four bags of corn chips. <laughs> And I still didn't even make it through the salad with wow. the corn chips. I wow. ended up having to throw out most of it. And I would have to say, I did like the salad. Yeah. Did I crave it? No. Yeah. I don't understand how it swept the nation. I I wasn't as big of a fan as the Green Goddess salad as I was of the simple Mediterranean salad that she did, which was the cucumbers, olives, red onion, tomato. Okay. With the lemon juice dressing. It was like very simple. And I love the tang of olives and the yes. lemon juice. And that's one that I was like, I love it. I All right. I'm going back for more. I'm going to try that. What I did like about the Green Goddess was the salad dressing. And what that did spark for me is because I had so much basil left mm, i yum. decided oh guys and i had the nuts from this green goddess yes. salad too left over i had walnuts i made a my own pesto oh my god guys you that used was the, the blender for the pesto i did oh my and god. it was th i made and then i just dropped pasta in there it's the cheapest Ugh. best meal i've ever made in my entire i'm back on pasta and breads again i love it it's a money saver and it fills you up and i don't think i'm gaining Pasta is better for you than bread. I just read an article about this because That's my great. boyfriend made a claim, which I thought I was like, this is an Italian. Well, I don't know if he's he going said into no flossing. <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend did. To, he told me I asked him if he had been flossing and he said uh, he thought that it was debunked. <laughs> And <laughs> I did too. I was on the, but there was part of me that's like, there's no way, but I'm going with it. I, I like yeah. that the flossing is like the bacon of the, where it's <laughs> like, it's in, it's out. It's, in. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so I did look it up and he's actually right. Like pasta, even white pasta okay. is better for you than bread because um, it has a low glycemic index, which I didn't know. Like bread has like a, that high glycemic index where it's like, some bread has sugar in it, but even yeah. if it doesn't, it just breaks down so fast that the carb acts like a sugar, basically. But pasta doesn't. Oh. It's it re it's like a more of a slow energy release. Well, I was going to say, our friend Matteo eats pasta all the time. Butter noodles. And he's he's a butter noodle boy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's jacked. Ripped. He's jacked. So I think we have been... The bread campaign needs to come back, or the pasta. I am back on it. I'm 100%. I'm, I'm back doing bread, and I actually, because I've been doing um, – less cardio workout and more weightlifting workout i i actually am not noticing any difference in like my appearance or anything i'm uh, like oh, yeah i'm just doing like the slow weightlifting which i love i'm like this is easy yeah this i'm so we're just saying that like guys it's safe bread bread is so safe and it's so amazing yeah and it's the cheapest meal that you'll ever make i'm gonna try to make the no need bread tonight yes the yes. new york times one that you can do in the dutch oven and i'll keep you posted on that but and yes the blender with the green goddess that inspired me to do the um, pesto. And so I, you did the you did a kind of like a walnut pesto. I did and instead of like a pine nuts. I did. I didn't have the pine nuts, and I didn't want to go to the. I the thing is, all the ingredients left over from the green goddess. There's nothing worse. This is why I don't like doing salads. Yeah, you have a lot of stuff left over that 
feels like you going can't, bad it quick yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you have no time yeah, yeah yeah you have to make this work and that's how I was like oh I'll do pesto and so the blender helped in that and I finished like that only lasted like two days it sounds delicious but that the green goddess dressing I do have to say was good and I also am like what is nutritional yeast I couldn't find it anywhere. I didn't know. I was like, where do you even look for that? If I went to Fairway, like where, what, where would that even be? It's at where you probably find, I found it where the almond flour area is. Okay. Um, okay. Or the bulgur wheat kind of, the, the more granola area of the yeah. grocery store. But I don't know if it added any flavor, but I know a lot of vegans like it in their like, salad dressing she does a lot of miso paste in, in her dressings and miso paste is oh so delicious super good and it's so good for you because it's fermented so I think it's like really good for your gut oh I had no idea um I just remembered this and and I feel like we're really hitting it right now okay. because um <laughs> somebody told me that this podcast was like the delicious dish on SNL. Re- and oh, yes, it is. <laughs> yes. It is because we, there's a, when I was doing our promo clips, there was a moment where we went through our favorite lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> it's You're so like funny. arugula. Oh, love an arug. <laughs> but I was just thinking of that. I was like, particularly this episode, you know, where I, of course, that is the famous, um, you guys remember the famous one where they have sweaty the, balls. Sh- the sweaty balls. Yes. And it's like Alec Baldwin, you know, pre murder. And um, <laughs> they're going through and they just have like such kind of like a deadpan delivery. It's Molly Shannon and um, Anna Gasteyer. <gasps> Anna Gasteyer and her son went to the preschool that I used to work at oh. and I met her a few times and she was absolutely lovely. Uh, very funny. I loved her on Maria Bamford's show that was around. Uh, Lady Dynamite. Yes. So good. Uh, she was great as an agent. Yes. Yeah. She was great. Um, but to get back to the um, the blending. The blender. The blender. I have, I have a... <laughs> I am a not done talking about blending because I was on a journey with my blender. Okay, and I want to hear. Yes, I, this was the specific reason that I got it because I tried to do this soup last year. I tried to do it um, with my little Nutribullet, and it was a mess. But this is an amazing soup, and I got the hack from the um, Whole Thirty email list before I had to unsubscribe because they they send like do not get on the email list for Whole Thirty because it's it's but like an email twice a day. Is it like when you donate money to Planned Parenthood? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> okay, guys. I am now pro life. Yeah, because please, please. <laughs> I know. I it was the same thing with like a- anytime there's an election, I'm like, I don't want another message from Joe Biden or I'm going to block him. Get the fuck out of my this face. Is detrimental. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, it's um, you take like a can of or a jar of like simmer sauce like I- and you can get it. simmer sauce. It's like an Indian like you can get all different types like tikka masala is a good one or they have like different like tandoori. OK. Um, and you get it in uh, the international section. I think I've seen it. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, and so you take that, you take a, a cauliflower head, you steam it. Then you, so you, you steam the cauliflower, takes like 30 minutes or whatever, however long until it's tender. And then uh, you remove the water. I put in, um, you can do chicken stock, vegetable stock, whichever, and the simmer sauce. And you just simmer it mm-hmm. for a good 30 minutes. And then you take the blender and you blend it all in. Satisfying. Oh, and it makes this incredible, like uh, Indian food is a uh, food. I love it. It's flavorful. It's so flavorful. And the spices are amazing. If you have like a, like a little cold or something um, or COVID, you know, wh- whichever. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like a food that. I get Indian food maybe once every four months. Yes. And every time I go, I get sag bhaji. That's the only thing I get. I, I'm tikka. You like a tikka. Which I always think is the introductory into Indian yes. food. You can't go wrong. It's like, you know, butter chicken. I love a butter chicken. Yeah. And But that's a food that you're like, I don't have the confidence to make Indian food at yeah. home. Like, who do I think I am? You know, you just feel like a white stereotype. Like, yeah. tonight we're having... <laughs> Bangladeshi cuisine it's like oh I'm a bitch I know what is it about like I see that when I liked my next goal my next journey I want to do get into is making all kinds of noodle dishes like uh, Mm. I like to call it ramen flipping oh yes where you take a ramen packet and then you use your own ingredients yes yes but when sometimes you get you're like I don't know if I can use fish sauce can I have the skill level (laughs) for fish sauce and you're like it's yeah. fucking, it's another sauce. It's just a you sauce. You white yeah. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't study abroad in Thailand. I don't know what I'm doing. 
Yeah, and you just go, you know, I love to go down a path that just leads me to a stereotype. Yeah, me too. <laughs> a white person. Um, but, but yeah, so this is like an actually, this is the only Indian dish that I've ever made that I felt confident. And I was like, this is also, I gave it to my boyfriend. He loved it. And he's like the type of person that he's like a cauliflower. Like, really? A ca- I'm not eating a cauliflower. It's like, you just did. Gotcha. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, punks. food, food you punks, lady yeah. journey punks. Yeah, <laughs> healthy food. <laughs> now yeah, this is for your heart, babe. <laughs> I would love if we did a punk where we stay in a van and we make male comics eat something that's not chicken tenders by mistake. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you just uh, like something super elevated. <laughs> yeah. You thought this was bar food, but actually it was a four-star Michelin cuisine. <laughs> There's like, anchovies okay. in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One time my um, boyfriend got anchovies that we used to go to Mike's Diner in Astoria all the time. Fantastic Greek salad. Unbelievable. Mm. But one time it had anchovies on it and he was like, I can't. I don't know. I'm like, it's just a little salty fish. Just I take love it, it off. Just take it off and move it, it around. I That's why I always like to blow people's mind where I'm like. I like to blow people. <laughs> I just love blowing people. Lady journey. It's such a lady journey. Well, did you know that a lot of pasta sauces that you eat have anchovy paste in there? Oh, yeah. And a lot of like Gardetto chips. People don't know that that's made with anchovy paste. It's just a little tangy salt. I love the flavor of it. Actually. I know. And if you don't tell people it's anchovies, they're like, this is the best stuff on earth. But when they find out it has anchovies, they become like so close-minded yeah there's a little infuriating canned fish well i'm like such a person i used to eat sardines like very frequently yeah and people are like oh foul yeah it's actually (laughs) like um you know if you were in italy you'd just be like eating it as a snack you know yeah it's well it's just like a it's like a salty delight it's like a little salty sardines is one of the best foods you can eat yeah I mean, I'm not, like, eating it, you know, raw from a can. Like, I'd put it on toast and, like, drench it in mustard. Yes. Don't you feel so decadent? Ugh, it's a great snack. Yeah. I feel like a little French person. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And it's kind of actually not that expensive. Oh, no. They're, they're, if you are broke and you're like, okay, I need to, like, really eat well tonight just get a little can of sardines yeah treat yourself on a cracker with some gherkins oh it's the best thing yeah but this brings us to our main topic which i'm um really excited about because we are going to do a whole thing uh, a little deep dive into pantries and yes fully stocked pantry i'm th- it is my dream when i when i went home for um the holidays i go to my my mom she bakes she's um she bakes she's always cooking she's got this fantastic fully stocked pantry where it's like she's got all the flowers she's got all the sweeteners she has all the different salts the sauces the oils now meanwhile i go through it and half of it is expired because <laughs> from 1987 because yeah, she goes to costco and she gets <laughs> the jumbo of everything but it's been like my dream especially since like we had the pandemic and then i moved into my new place i want to have like a pantry where it's and it's not like i want to hoard food or something which I also do want to do that, and I'm trying not to. Yeah. But I want to go to the store. I want to be able to go to the grocery store and pick up, like, five things and come home and make dinner. Yes. Versus what I'm doing now, which is I'm trying to make a recipe. I'm going to the store. I'm getting eight things. Then I'm going to another store to get four more things. And it's just, like, a never-ending cycle of, like, getting more ingredients and never having, like, vanilla or, you know, like, the fish sauce or everything. Yeah. Uh, well, New York's is a nightmare for grocery shopping because some stores don't carry pork products or some stores don't have that special harissa paste that you need yes. or whatever. And that you're going to five different places where I actually feel like New York lacks. They need a big super grocery store, at least in a story or in the other neighborhoods. Astoria, I'm shocked that there's not like a gigantic grocery store here even like whole yeah. foods you go to whole foods which let's be honest it's been downhill ever since jeff bezos took it over also i think whole foods feels like a scam to me i'd rather i think i'd rather be a trader joe's kind of gal yeah trader joe's is t- tough for ingredients though like the spice game at trader joe's very bad? weak yeah i needed a chili powder i thought surely trader joe's will have chili powder <laughs> yes. one of the most that's one of the Basic. most used spices yeah i couldn't get it and then I ended up having to go. I have a, a Trader Joe's, a Target, and a Fairway all. And, and now I'm just like, every time I go out for groceries, it's like, and now it's a journey. Now yes. it is a full <laughs> epic where I'm trying to get four things. 
and I'm going yes. back and forth between the stores. It's a it's it can be a nightmare, I think. Yeah. To find especially like I don't know, if you want to cook a seafood dish. Yeah. I don't want to get seafood from the actual grocery store here cuz it just feels like the fish has been sitting out for a while. Yeah, it's like you have to yeah, you're absolutely right. It's like you have to go to a grocery store that either has a high-end fish section, which Whole Foods does, but it's a little overpriced. Yeah. Or you have to basically go to the fish market. Yes. And, and that's an, a fish market is an intimidating place for me. It's very intimidating because it's like, OK, now I'm supposed to be like have the expertise of a sailor. I have no <laughs> idea. How about when they're like, can I get a bag of shrimp? And they're like, do you want the one eighths or do you want the three fourteenths? Or yeah, you're like, I don't I just want shrimp. Please let me leave. <laughs> no shit in there. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Take out the poop. That's all I want. Like, I don't kn- I don't know. Or sometimes like deboned, and then you're like, I don't. Should I get the bone? I don't know. It's it's Your seafood is really the only seafood that I really cook is salmon. Yeah, I just get the salmon from Trader Joe's. But yeah, it's 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 tricky. I'd like to be like that type of person that's like, mm, I just had a few mussels tonight, you know, <laughs> in my Le Creuset, <laughs> you know. But it's like n- mussels, forget it. Yeah, it's that's a trek. Um, oh uh, yeah, but you're right. Like you want to be the idea of having a pantry where you're like. I can make anything as disposable at my fingertips right yes, now. Yes, yes. Like, I want to be out, and then, like, uh, on a winter night, I'm, I'm heading home. I stop past the grocery store. I pick up, like, a meat, a veggie. I go home, and I have everything. Yeah. Like, I have rice, quinoa. Like, that's – and I have gone through those lists, too, where it's, like, okay, these basic, like – what I need to do, maybe I'll do this for the blog, is make like a pantry staple, but New York style. Oh God, Katie, this is so genius because I think a pantry staple would help a lot of people out. Yeah, yeah. Because they have, and I they have lists out there, and I found some, but I'm like, this list is so comprehensive. It's like canned corn, like canned yeah. corn. <laughs> I'm not preparing to like um, uh, quarantine for the next six months. Like yeah. canned corn is crazy. Yeah. But, like, you know, at least the grains. Right now I have, I do have, like, some staples of, like, honey. I've got the quinoa. I've got the cocoa powder. I have olive oil. You know, those type of staples. But it's kind of all over the place, you know. Yeah, you want to be in a position where, like, uh, you can make a cake at the drop of a hat. You can yes. make bread at the drop of a hat. You, If you just need to get a protein, you can make an actual meal. But what kills me is, like, the herbs. How the yes, fuck do I keep yes. my herbs fresh long? Um, somebody told me my spices should not be in the windowsill. Oh, because the sun will, I, I guess, deflavor them. Wow. Over time. But, um. How, how long can you keep herbs? Is that a thing you have to, like, throw out after? That's what you need like to. Like thyme and, or, or oregano. I feel like I've had oregano for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been, like, carrying it around from apartment to apartment. I'm like, this is still good, right? Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, everything I make tastes like shit. <laughs> I like, always- what could it be? <laughs> It's my rye, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then there's some that I'm like, "What is this? Like, it's a blend of something, but I don't even know what it is." And can yes, I like use poultry it? Poultry seasoning, yeah, or something. Steak, yeah. yeah, yeah, steak stuff. Um, what also have this bad habit of? I think I have like five cumin bottles. Oh yeah, I call it the oh. Sarah Talamash story. <laughs> <laughs> Your autobiography of <laughs> through as told through cumin. Because it's like you go to the store, you're like, you bought, you're like, I don't think I have cumin and I need cumin. And then you realize, oh, I bought cumin the last time. Yes. And yes. now I have five bottles of it. Yes. I should just re gift it. I have something similar going on with, um, uh, oh, what's this spice? I'm, I'm blanking out on it. It's like a yellow one. Turmeric. Yes. Turmeric. I have a gigantic turmeric thing, and then I keep buying, and then I just put it in the big one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think I, I think I like inherited like this gigantic pound of turmeric. Yeah, because like, you can get this it. This is my legacy. It has. It's one of the few that comes in the big canister. Turmeric is one that you know you're supposed to be like using it in everything and put it in a smoothie, everything. Yes, I um, you can do a like a turmeric latte, like a matcha latte. Ooh, uh, that's not bad. I would use my immersion blender for that. That's not bad. Ugh. 
Back I to the blender. I have not thought of using it for like frothing milk or anything like that, but I bet it would be delicious. I haven't tried, but I have whipped up cream, but I whipped it up too much that I was like, this is just like a butter that I made. Oh, you whipped cream with it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I did not know that you could do that. Yeah. I'm so excited by that. There's I love to do like a mousse. Yes. The, I it's think so decadent, so easy. Yes. And that's if you have a pantry stocked. Yeah. You can always make a mousse. Oh, now a mousse is like the perfect thing if you want to do um, like a special dinner for your boyfriend or something and you're like, what can I do for dessert? I don't want to make a whole cake. Like mousse is like all you need is heavy cream mm -hmm. and chocolate chips. Yes. That's literally and maybe like a touch of butter. And you could also throw in like a few egg yolks. Yeah. Did I tell you go. about the, the pie I made for my family during the holidays i'm not sure oh i made the most amazing i did a ritz cracker no crust you haven't told me oh ritz cracker crust easy crust easy butter crust, and crushed salty yes so salty and then i did a um a chocolate cream yes for my dad loves chocolate cream pie. and a little bit of salt with the chocolate is not bad oh my god it was buttery salty and then the cream was so rich i did put egg yolks in okay to the keep egg it together yolks are like it just gives it like um a richness it doesn't keep it really together i've made mousse where i've just done literally heavy cream whipped and then you fold in the melted chocolate you melt it like oh. stove top and pour in the heavy cream but the I i'm just, gonna try that i just Tonight, tried it maybe. and it, it made it such a fuller flavor because you know at times when you do the chocolate has a full flavor and the cream's full but like it it almost gets that like that flavor that things have when it's just too much white sugar it's uh, like, this just tastes like white sugar. I yeah. hate it. I find like yeah. a lot like uh, Hostess cupcakes kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, most desserts, I think that like cakes in America, I'm like, I can't taste anything in here. The it's you just, just sugar. It immediately like dulls your taste buds and it's like now my mouth is just like going into shock. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm feeling immense guilt. Yeah. Well, because there's like, it wasn't worth it. <laughs> it <laughs> was not worth it. There's nothing worse when you decide to in indulge in something decadent like a dessert. Yeah. And then you get it and it is just straight sugar. And you're like, I didn't taste anything. This didn't satisfy my sweet tooth. And yeah. now I feel like shit. Yeah. No. I don't mind feeling like shit if it tastes amazing. If it's worth it. If it's yeah. Like, yeah. My thing I'm loving as I'm growing older, I'm like, I guess I'm, th I'm just like growing into like a crone, but I love like <laughs> an oatmeal raisin or like yes. um, anything with dates or figs. Yes. Oh. Like a, with a nut and with like. A nut or like anything with like brown sugar. I hate white sugar. I never use it. Yeah. Brown sugar all the way or like a little honey. Yes. It gives it more of a flavor. Kind of like, I think we're heading into like Greek desserts. Oh. Like a baklava. Oh, I love a baklava. A phyllo dough and honey and some nuts. Oh, yes. Yeah. And you guys have the best br Greek um, desserts over here. Yaya's yes. on 34th Street. I used to go there all the time. Oh, I'm going to actually, I don't think I've been to that one. They have amazing, the baklava there is amazing. The cookies are amazing. And they have an amazing spinach pie. Yes. The is spinach the pie spanic, is. Spanakopita? That's my favorite. a little term to say oh, spanakopita <laughs> this one is like a little it's like a square so okay. i think it's like a little bit different all righty but i love it i love what's a it called yaya's yeah yeah all right oh so I'm good to check that everybody out. check it out anyway so yeah that's our pantry episode guys thank you so much for tuning in everybody and um, um check out the blog uh, i guess yeah check out the blog can you leave comments on the blog because sometimes people if they have like an idea or like I'm yes. just inquiring. Yes. Because some blogs you can. You can. You, yeah. I have the comment section open and it's like open, open season. I love, um, we've had like a really, some awesome interaction on our Patreon where people are like sharing tips and, you know, like just giving us like ideas and, you know, I think that's, the blog is a really fun place for that too. So if you're not on the Patreon and you're still into it, like go for it. Let us know on the blog. Let yeah. us know um, through our Patreon email ladyjourney at gmail.com although i think oh sorry ladyjourneypodcast at gmail.com i think we're gonna maybe start skewing away from the email and going more to like leaving comments on the blog just because the email is now inundated with tons of uh, our other business just stuff all the stuff that we signed up for is just <laughs> non-stop like seo seo uh, <laughs> we're like just help us someone please help yeah. us <laughs> like it's too much uh yeah it's great place for that and um always love if you have your pantry staples i want to hear about yes. it yes pantry staple list because that's a really great idea we'll We'll get on that. And thanks for all the um, – you guys have 
left some incredible reviews. Thank you so, so much. And please keep doing that because yeah. it really helps. Appreciate it. Lady Journey. Lady Journey.